We often talk about the passport bros and how these guys have to go to another country and spend on foreign women simply because these dudes allegedly can't get women in the United States. And women always talk about them like this. You know a man ain't when all these women in America, millions and millions of women, and nobody wants you, and you gotta go way to another country so somebody can want you. That's sad. Hell, they ain't gonna want you either. And of course, a lot of men clap back at, you know, ladies like that who have such negative things to say. But see, y'all don't know it works both ways, especially in the Pan-African community. We have a lot of ladies that come from America that come all the way to Africa who is, uh, let's just say, booty clapping sounds. Yeah, they over here getting their cheeks clapped. But what kind of men are they getting? Can I get a dun 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 sound effect? Well, see, in America, they want a black man to have everything. You know, money, car, house, be six foot seven, play point guard for the Lakers, and then, you know, play quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, and then be a pitcher for the New York Yankees, all in the same week. But when they get to Africa, woo, standards be dropping. There is a YouTuber who was an African American that was living in Gambia. Her name was Art Kathy. And she noticed something. She noticed that a lot of black women, when they come to the Gambia, they were lower their standards for African guys while requiring higher things from American guys. Let's check it out. Something I saw that was really ironic to me, sis, sis, this was ironic. Y'all should go back to the video, would you um, date or marry a Gambian man? Go back to that video where I interviewed like the 22 year old beach guy out there and I saw the comments, just look at those comments. Some of the sisters, we're saying, I could rock with it. I could work with him. I mean, y'all were giving him a lot of praise. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have or should have. I was just really t impressed by how you guys were willing to give this brother a shot. And he showed you his living quarters. Like, he showed you that he was living and sleeping in a tent outside, cooking on the rocks, in the wood. And I had a sister say, I can fix it up and make it nice. And I was like, wow. <laughs> But let that have been a brother in the States. If a brother in the States ain't even got a car, the sister's not even checking for him, no education, what? You know, I know a lot of sisters can be very, very particular and have these expectations of black men, but when they come to Africa or when it came to that video, I'm gonna just talk about the video. I thought that was very ironic. That's right. And she also shows some footage of a young man that was a muscular guy that was living pretty bad and sisters was really on him. Let's check it out. This where you bring the ladies? <laughs> this where you bring your girlfriend? Yeah, baby girlfriend, yes. Yeah, okay, ladies, he telling y'all where y'all gonna be hanging out. <laughs> yeah, African house. <laughs> African house. Yeah. So you take a lady back here on a date? No lady on a date. How do you, how do you take a lady on a date here? Where would you take her? Like what? Where would you take her? Where would you go? No, just when I bring lady, you know, we can have a chatting, you know. You can chat, okay. Yeah, only that, you know. You gonna chat in here? Mm. You gonna bring her back here and chat? Yeah, chat, you know, sometimes. Okay, I don't see nothing wrong with it. I'm just asking questions. If you go in the comments section, you're gonna see exactly what I saw. Women willing to risk it all for that young guy who was pretty much living like in a tent, all right? But let's fast forward. Let's get to my man, Dinah Stamir. He's from my city, Sacramento, California. Give him a round of applause. Unfortunately, he's from South Sacramento. You know, your boy is from Del Paso Heights, so we really don't get along. You know, we don't really mess with the smouth, but it's all right. You know, he's a good brother anyway. Gotta love him. He was interviewing this one sister by the name of Kiki Loves Nigeria, right? And she has a YouTube channel that focuses really on what's going on in the diasporan community. And Brother Dynast noticed something, that so many black American women are out there spending money on young African men. Let's check it out. Hey, Kiki, this is what I'm noticing now, and I wanna be very careful. And you're a woman, so I want your I want your feedback on this. Yeah, okay. and, and I, I I brought this up before, and I was yelled at. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to yell at the internet. 
Now, this is what I noticed, Kiki, and correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. In America, sisters want a man that makes six figures. Mm -hmm. He got to take care of everything. He got to be the man of the house. Mm -hmm. I ain't going 50-50 with no, you know what? I'm educated. I got my own money. Mm -hmm. Why would I go 50-50? Right. Nah. I, it's to the point now I'm hearing, all right, if I got to go 50-50 with a man, I'm going to have me a side dude. Okay. We the most educated. We make the most money than our men. Mm -hmm. But I'm noticing when sisters go to Africa. Kiki. Yeah. That's true. I don't know what goes on, but I, I'm just noticing it seems like sisters are fronting the whole bill. Yeah. Am I wrong? Yes. No, you're not wrong. And that's another thing I talk about on my show. I talk about that. Is that it's so, for some reason, when we go to Africa, we just lower our standards or we don't have any standards. Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm. But then he talked about a time he was in Zanzibar, right? And these black women were in Zanzibar. Let's check it out. Kiki, I was in Zanzibar. This is back in 2011. I thought this is the this is the first time I noticed this phenomenon. Mm -hmm. so I'm in Zanzibar, 2011. There was a group of, of, of sisters, Black American women sisters, because I talked to them. Mm -hmm. They're in Zanzibar, and and just like uh, Gambia, you have I call them renter dreads or renter <laughs> yeah. they they're, they're, they're all, the they're, all tour, they're all tour guides. In yeah. fact, they're not. They they moonlight as tour guides, but they do everything. They do everything. That's and they, they just walk around. They they're your weed man, <laughs> oh, you know, tour guide. You know, they, they 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 do they do a little bit of everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so I remember, you know, they with the sisters. They walking around, holding hands, kissing. Yeah. You know, and I, and, I, and then so the hotel I was the bed and breakfast I was staying at. It's like a, it's a restaurant downstairs and upstairs is the lodging, the rooms. Mm -hmm. So the sisters, they come, they sit down with me. We're talking and, you know, they're like, oh, these African men are so romantic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, these Western men, these, you know, black America, y'all ain't romantic. These African men are so romantic. And I'm just listening. <laughs> they leave. They leave. They leave. They leave. You hear that part? They left, right? Now they left. Then these old white women came in. What happened, Ditus? A group of old white women. Kiki. Now, I I've shared this before. Back when I was at the University of Georgia playing football, we had the Snow Buddies. But they was young. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yes. They was young. They was fit. Yes. They was fine. You know, we had the cream de la cream of the Snow Buddies. <laughs> okay. So I never seen nothing like this. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Sure. So these young Zanzibarian men, mm -hmm. some old, old white women come. Yeah, like Kiki. Mm -hmm. When I say old, I mean like, uh, uh you know, uh, hospice. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Old. Yeah, that's true. Wrinkle. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. They pull up. These same Zanzibari men is with them now, holding oh. hands, kissing, walking around, walking around, walking around. Walking around. around. Ah, yeah. Them African dudes were showing those white ladies the same love they were showing those sisters. The same time they was talking about these black men um, in Zanzibar were more romantic than these African-American men. But wait a minute. He went back to Nigeria and he noticed something else at the hotel. Let's play the clip. But in January, I go to Nigeria. Right? Mm -hmm. So I take the bus from Kotonou to Lagos. Okay. So I get a hotel. I forgot what hotel. What hotel did I stay at? I'll pull it up here in a second. Mm -hmm. Check in. So I get because I know an American, like I really don't I, I know I, I know an American accent when I hear one. <laughs> yeah, you do. It was, it was a sister and her Nigerian guy. Okay. So we at the front desk, they're in front of me. 
when it's time to pay, guess who pulls out the credit card? That's right. It's so many sisters who are out there. Cha-ching! Sound effect. Yeah, paying their money. Why booty clapping sounds? That's right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, 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 you got, you know, Nigerian Pookie out there clapping them cheeks. So the thing that I want to talk about is why is that the case? Like, you, you remember Tiffany Henry, right? She is the mayor of Dole, Illinois. The dude that she was having an affair with was a man by the name of Lavelle Redmond. He had did 24 years in prison for G-R-A-P-E, right? You understand what that means, right? Forcibly taking cheeks. So how was the mayor who was the first African-American mayor dealing with a guy like that? I'll tell you why. Because they don't really have no choice but to deal with a guy like that. Because nobody wants to deal with a lady that acts like this. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet. The mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing. That only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work. No I've talked about this extensively with Dr. Tia Son Johnson of why you have more successful, wealthy black women dating broke black men. Had well-to-do women who were employed, who were educated, so on and so forth, and who would use the rationale that there were no other options and they would choose men that were intentionally in such a low position that those men could not offer much challenge. So in other words, they were in the dominant position in the relationship. These men depended on them for hearth and home, for in, uh, income, for food, for everything. And if they were so much, if there was so much as an argument, those men would be out on the street. And see, what they don't want to talk about is they're going over to Africa to get a younger guy that don't have no money trying to control the guy. But they find out the hard way that it doesn't work. OK, because in Africa, don't matter that you spend the money on me. You are still a lady and I'm still a man. And see, they try to make excuses. Ask Dinus when they say it's different. But damn it, don't be, don't put all this pressure on us brothers here in America. Mm -hmm. But when you go somewhere else, you flip the script. Mm -hmm. Like it's none of my business. It's your money. Spend your money how you want to. It's none of my business. But I just, I just thought it was hypocritical. Mm -hmm. And when I bring up stuff like this, I brought it up to a sister the other day, and she was just like. Well, you know, that is, it's different over here in Africa. It's different. It's different. Nah, it's not different. You see, the thing is, in America, you want a guy to take care of you. When you come over to Africa, you know, a lot of dudes ain't checking for you like that, right? The dudes that would check for you already gone. They already taken. So now we're starting to see that you out here, you know, tricking on these other guys out there and you got to spend your money because you got to pay to play. Because if you were really all like that, you would have dudes willing to pay for you. But what we keep seeing is, okay, if a dude in America don't want to pay for you, it's going to be hard for somebody overseas to want to pay for you. It's different for men. Because man, a man can say, I don't really like what I see in America. Let me go somewhere else. And somewhere else, I can find somebody that's going to have, you know, what I'm looking for. And hey, that's really what you can get. But as a woman, no, nah, a woman want a man to take care of them. And they not getting it. And when they don't get it, they got to go somewhere else, lower their standards, and they got to really break somebody off to you know get them cheeks clapped. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, Shady Jackson, back at it again with another episode of Fair Use. I'm out.